If you're someone who frequents this channel, it's likely that you're interested in studying medicine and maybe even undergrad medicine at Monash Uni. In particular, for that undergrad course at Monash, one of the prerequisites is chemistry. Now, you might be a chemistry whiz and that will probably be one of your best subjects, or you might be like me and chemistry is your seventh subject and doesn't count towards your ATAR. Regardless, you need to get above a raw 30 to be considered for the course because it's a prerequisite. And even excluding that, it's just good to know how to do well in the subjects that you are pursuing. Hi everyone, my name is Darren, a first year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to part 4 of the 3 tip series where we'll be talking about chemistry. Uh, if you haven't watched parts 1, 2 and 3, please check them out here. So chemistry was my 7th subject and I got a raw 44 in it, which is decent. Um, I considered it to be a pretty difficult subject because of how much content that was and also because it's a mixture of understanding with things like um, fuels and with cells, but also a lot of maths as well with mole calculations and thermochemistry. And I think that combination made it quite a difficult subject to do well in, which is why I wanted to share my top 3 tips with you guys so you guys can know how to excel and do well in VC chemistry. Also, please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and leave any questions you have for the 500 subscriber Q&A in the comments box below. Tip number one, chase understanding first and then memorization. The reason for this is that there is a ton of content in chemistry, from fuels to cells to um, thermochemistry to gases. There's just a lot of information within each subject, within each topic, and the topics don't really connect across each other that much. And to memorize them all by brunt force is not the best thing to do. Rather, it's best to understand the concepts behind the um, sort of information that you're learning. And then once you've learned those, it becomes much easier to apply the information. Um, admittedly, there are instances where you do have to memorize things. Uh, for example, you have to memorize some gas formulas. You have to memorize like Boyle's law, Charles's law, and properties of fuels. So what fuels are good to use, what fuels are bad to use. And there's a way to be efficient with this, which I will talk about in my third tip. Um, but yeah, there are things you have to memorize, but there's also a lot of things that you can understand conceptually. For example, cells is a big topic where it's good to understand what's going on because they never really give you the same cell each time. The cell is slightly different. Um, the sort of liquid used is different. The electrodes might be different, but you need to understand what's happening at each electrode. You need to understand what happens at the anode, what happens at the cathode, what makes it the anode, what makes it the cathode. Um, do you need a voltmeter? Do you need something to deliver electricity? Um, and cells become manipulated a lot when you start talking about like electrolysis and um, spontaneous reactions. Sometimes it gets confusing when the two electrodes might be flipped. And so understanding the concepts behind that and taking the time to learn it is much better than um, memorizing that, okay, anodes on the left, cathodes on the right, because that doesn't always give you the right answer. And it's also a bit of a headache to learn as well. So that's why I'd advise chasing understanding first. And then maybe you can have some shortcuts um, and memorize that the anode is here, the cathode is here for this particular cell. But if you understand the logic behind why that is, then you can manipulate and adapt it to the question that you're being asked. Tip number two is a tip that applies to chemistry and in particular content heavy subjects. So for example, bio as well. I didn't study bio or many other content heavy subjects, but um, this is incredibly useful and that is to revise regularly because it's so much easier to um, recall information to revise it regularly throughout, um, especially like fuels you learn really early in the year and you don't really touch again until the end of your exam. And so if you've all that time you haven't studied it at all, it's really hard to retrieve that information and apply it again. It takes a lot of effort and it's easy to become disheartened, um, especially when you're preparing for your other subjects as well. The best way to do well is to revise regularly. Now this may be through things like Anki, through Quizlet, um, through um, flashcards that you've, physical flashcards that you've made for yourself. But I really advise um, working intermittently to revise this information that you're learning. So that throughout the year, you're collating information, you're revising information, you're strengthening how well that, that info sticks in your mind. So that once you, once you reach the end of the year, it's a matter of sort of polishing and finding the small gaps in your knowledge rather than like you've forgotten all about fuels or you've forgotten all about thermochemistry because it happened so much earlier in the year. And just to note, I didn't revise chemistry as often as I should have um, because I considered it to be my seventh subject, like very, very likely to be my seventh subject. And so what I found was that some topics, yes, would stick in my head, like thermochemistry. I knew that a negative delta H meant that it was exothermic, positive delta H was endothermic. 
because that's sort of conceptual. It sort of makes sense if you're losing energy, it's exothermic. Um, But things like um, particularly with fuels and how they're derived and what fuels are good, how they impact the environment, if you don't revise that regularly, it's really easy to forget and it's a bit of a pain to find all that information again at the end of the year. Since chemistry is such an important subject and a prerequisite, I have a bonus tip at the end, so please stay tuned for that. Anyway, my third tip is to study the study design. Now, this is something you should do for any subject, English, maths, sciences, anything, because the study design is what like the people wrote to show what you need to know by the end of the year, so it's a really good checklist to see if you've covered all your bases. But the study design is particularly useful for content-heavy subjects, and I haven't done many others, as I said, but it's very useful for chemistry. And the reason for this is that it really picks out specific things you need to know. So one of the key things on the study design is to know how well hydrogen does as a fuel and the benefits and drawbacks of using hydrogen. Now, these types of questions have cropped up more recently. Um, VCAR have shifted away from math-based questions and more towards questions which challenge your understanding um, and how well you can apply your knowledge. And so this isn't like there was an infamous Mars question a couple years back which asked you to say how good hydrogen was as a fuel for the future and as to be used on Mars. Um, But the good thing about this is even though it seems like you learn about so many fuels, so many different types of um, ways you can derive energy, the study design picks out specific ones that you need to know and those are the ones you should get acquainted with and know in depth, which is why knowing the study design is so useful here. And once you've picked out those dot points, it's just a matter of working out and researching or asking your teacher about why, for example, hydrogen might be a good fuel and what are its drawbacks in terms of transportation or how does it need to be transported, Um, knowing those things. And then you'll get a lot of questions repeatedly asking you about them. You'll start memorizing the answers, understanding them better. And so in the end of the year, it might ask you something about Mars or Venus or whatever, but the basic principles are still the same. It still comes from the study design, still comes from that dot point. And so knowing the study design very well um, gives you that checklist and that confidence that you that all the any type of question, no matter how random it seems, is drawn from the study design. So as long as you know those dot points, and in particular those like those ones that are spotlighted um, by VCAR, then you can do well in the subject. My bonus tip is to start doing chemistry practice exams early. Now this is good for a number of reasons, and also you don't have to have learned the content to do the exams. Um, just start doing them early on and just do the questions that you are capable of doing. I don't recommend rushing through the content so you can start doing time exams early. There are a lot of exams, it's more worthwhile to work through them slowly. And also um, the checkpoints book is pretty good because it's not just past exam questions. Uh, There's some new questions thrown in there as well. So yeah, it's good for a number of reasons. One reason being that you can be acquainted with the timing of the exam. Um, It's quite a long exam and you might be good at different areas of the subject or you might like you know, starting with extended response and then doing multiple choice. Working out all these little things, little strategies is good early on in the year so that you can develop a pattern. Um, so that's why I recommend starting exams early. Also, you can become acquainted with the formula sheet. So the formula sheet is quite hefty. I think it's more than 10 pages and there's a lot in there, names of amino acids, names of fatty acids. And um, it's good to be able to navigate it quickly so it saves you time uh, at the end of your exam. And finally, VCAR exams for chemistry are quite hefty, Um, there's a vast range of topics, there's quite a bit of writing involved and I think it's just more than two hours if you wanted to sit a timed one. So you don't want to be um, cramming that at the end of the year, it's good to spread it out. In particular because there's so many topics it's good to identify what parts of the subject that you're weak in early on so you can consolidate that rather than you know shoving all that information into your head uh, at the very end. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, If you're looking for more VC related content, please check out some of my other videos. Happy holidays. I hope you guys are relaxed and didn't get a ton of holiday homework. I'll be releasing a pretty big video on how to do well in term two in general and how to prepare well and um, get ready for all those sacks that seem to be just on the horizon. So stay tuned for that. Happy holidays. Happy Easter. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.